Hello everyone, my name is Michael Reichel and I'll be presenting range proofs, um, more specifically efficient range proofs with transparent setup from bounded integer commitments. Um, and this is joint work by Schofrel Coutel, Michael Klose, and Wang Lin. So, first of all, what are range proofs? Well, it's just a way to show that some hidden but fixed integer x lies in a given range a, b. And this can be used in a wide rate wide range of applications, for example, anonymous credentials, where you might want to show that you have a certain age, or anonymous transactions, where you might want to show that a, your balance that is hidden but fixed is non-negative, so you don't have overspending in your system. So before I dive into the construction, I want to define two primitives that will be necessary. First of all, commitments. So in our case, I will draw commitments with a blue box around the committed value x with randomness r. And then given this commitment c, um, we can open it by providing x and r to a verifier, and then he can check whether he's convinced by it. And we want two main properties. The first one being that the commitment should not reveal x, so it's hiding. And the second one being that the commitment should not be able to be open to something else than x, so it binds the proof uh, the committer to x. So, so far so good. Those are standard um, requirements. And now um, for this talk, I want two other requirements. The first one being that the message base should be set Q. Um, this is important for the construction. And the second one is homomorphy. Um, so we want additive homomorphism and additive homomorphism of the commitment. So we want to be able to compute a commitment to x0 plus x1, given a commitment to x0 and a commitment to x1. And similarly, we want to um, be able to compute the commitment n times x um, from a commitment x where n is a scatter. So the second primitive I want to introduce are sigma protocols. Here, a prover can show to a verify that he knows a witness w for a statement x. And generally he proceeds as follows. So it's always a three round protocol where at first the prover commits to a mask of the witness. Then he sends the first flow to the verifier. The verifier will draw a random challenge and send it to the prover. And based on this, the prover will mask the witness um, with respect to the challenge and also the mask that he previously committed to and send this to the verifier and then the verifier can output one if the transcript is convincing enough for him and we want two properties from this type of protocol the first one being zero knowledge so we want that transcripts can be simulated without knowledge of w so intuitively the um, the prover doesn't reveal anything about w when interacting with the verifier and the second one being soundness which states that a witness w can be extracted from exact the transcripts. So intuitively that means that the prover should know um, should know w actually. So in range proofs, we want to show that a committed value um, lies inside a given range. So for this, we need to first of all, open the committed value to the verifier in a zero knowledge way. Um, for this, the verifier receives the statement c and um, the prover has also access to the committed values and the randomness. And then the prover can show to the verifier that he knows the opening by essentially committing to masks M and S in a commitment D, sending it to the verifier who draws a random challenge gamma, sends it to the prover, and then the prover computes M plus gamma times X and S plus gamma times R and sends it to the verifier. And then the verifier checks whether this relation so um, the, the linear relation between M, the mask, gamma, the challenge, and X, the committed value, holds inside the uh, commitments that you already received beforehand. So for the soundness property, we can actually easily show that if we have two transcripts with the same first flow, then we can just accept, uh, then we can just extract X equals to Z0 minus Z1, uh, divided by gamma 0 minus gamma 1 uh, mod q. So yeah, this is essentially very important for later. Um, so yeah, keep this in mind. 
Um, and zero knowledge is quite easy to show because you just send committed commitments and uh, masked values. So let's dive deeper into um, the definition of range proofs and how they can be constructed. So essentially the formal definition of a range proof is that we want to have a, uh, a zero knowledge proof for the following relation, which essentially captures um, the, the intuitive relation where you open a, a commitment and you show that the opening is inside the given range AB. So the, the committed values inside the given range AB. And this can be um, built by two different approaches. The first one being binary decomposition. So here essentially you just decompose the value into a number of bits. So essentially just the binary decomposition of it. And then you show that this, this binary decomposition holds and that all the committed values, so the xi's, are actually bits. And this yields to uh, this leads to quite efficient range proofs in, uh, for example, the lattice or D-log setting. Um, and it's also the most common approach nowadays. And the second approach is um, is uh, using integer commitments, where you essentially show that x is in AB by showing that x minus a and b minus x is bigger or equal to zero. And you can show that over the integers by showing that b minus x times x minus a is the sum of four squares. Um, of course, for this, it's important that you show this over the integers. And um, for this, you need integer commitments. And generally, this approach leads to quite large parameters so or requires quite large parameters um, so large proofs and also requires trusted setup because it's usually based on RSA or class groups with trusted setup. So now we will use this square decomposition in our construction um, but we um, apply a different spin on it. So now we will slightly simplify the square decomposition so we can show that x is in a b if x minus a is in 0 b minus a and if we set b so capital B as b minus a then we can just show that x times b minus x is the sum of four squares um, in order to show that x is in a b so um, essentially it suffices to show that some integer x is in the range 0 b for some integer b so essentially we can just show that x is in 0 b in order to show that x is in a, B for any, in, uh, for any bounds A and B. Um, and this can even be further optimized by using the three square decomposition. So we can just show that one plus four times X times B minus X is equal to the sum of three squares. This decomposition can be computed very fast and um, it implies that X is in zero B. So this is essentially what we will use. And now I will go over the construction. So the setting is that um, we want to compute, uh, we want to build a range proof that uses a fairly generic commitment scheme um, that commits to values x0 over set Q. So x0 is the value for which we want to show that it lies in 0B, in the range 0B. And we want to avoid trusted setup. And we want to avoid, uh, we want to optimize efficiency. So how do we do that? Well, the basic idea is to just use square decomposition in ZQ. Um, so let's just do that. We construct a sigma protocol for showing the three square decomposition. So we commit to the XIs. We first of all commit, um, I mean, so we compute the three square decomposition. We commit to the XIs and then we do a proof of opening as I've shown you before. So we send the set, uh, the, the commitments and the commitments of the masks to the verifier. The verifier will draw a random challenge. And then the prover can just send um, the, um, the masked witnesses to the verifier. Um, and then he can check whether the um, prover essentially used um, uh, consistent values throughout the proof. So he checks whether um, the linear relation between mask, challenge, and witness holds inside the commitment scheme. And also he checks the three-square decomposition 
So I won't go into detail how this can be done. This is quite uh, setting dependent, so I don't want to um, go into detail on this for now, but it's essentially quite fast and low overhead. So um, of course this is not um, a sufficient range proof yet because the three squared decomposition in ZQ does not actually imply positivity because even negative values have squares, for example. And the idea that we had in this paper is essentially to avoid overflows by ensuring short witnesses. And if there's no overflow, then essentially we have a normal integer calculation. Um, so the one point is that we can't actually check whether xi is short as a verifier because we don't have access to xi, but we can check whether zi is short. So zi con um, contains xi, so if zi is short, xi should also be short intuitively. Um, so if we add that check as a verifier, we will see that actually the extracted value is not necessarily short because as I've shown you before, we can extract x0 um, from two transcripts um, where we set x0 equals z0 minus z0 prime divided by gamma minus gamma prime. So z0 and z0 prime are checked to be short. Gamma minus gamma prime is short because the verifier will choose a sufficiently short value. But um, since we divide mod q, the shortness is not necessarily retained. This can be seen by a very simple example, for example, one divided by two, where one and two is obviously short, um, will always be able to around half of the modulus. So this is very large. Um, and so essentially this doesn't suffice yet. But the main idea is essentially that we can map fractions in set Q to integers via a division in Q. So essentially um, what we do is we encode the committed value one divided by two mod Q um, to one divided by two over the integers. And then we round this value. So 0 0.5 rounded is equal to one. And this actually retains smallness, which is what we need in order to then check the square decomposition of the integers. So this yields a um, integer commitment scheme. Um, so essentially we relax the original commitment scheme. We say that the commitment to Z times gamma to the power of minus one mod Q um, in the original commitment um, actually commits to the message x equals z divided by gamma and then round it. And if we do that, then we can verify fairly simply to um, a bunch of properties. Um, so first of all, this um, is obviously still um, hiding because uh, it's basically the same commitment scheme as before. If gamma is equal to one, for example, then we can just commit to um, x and uh, we have the standard hiding properties from before. So it's also binding if z and gamma are short with respect to the modulus. It also retains restricted homomorphic properties. I will go into a bit more detail later and also retains shortness um, as I've shown before. And um, also important, honest commitments remain unchanged. So we can just set gamma equals one so committing to x is essentially just a standard commitment to x if x is short. So yeah, this leads to a bounded integer commitment scheme, bounded because the committed values have to be short in order to be binding. And um, so now we can use this in our range proof scheme. So essentially we don't, um, we don't actually change the, the range proof itself um, because honest commitments remain unchanged. So we can just reuse the same scheme. But um, we now say that uh, the commitments we use are relaxed commitments. So the extracted values are actually short in Z. And then this suffices to actually check that the three, the three squared relation holds for the extracted values over the integers. So before I dive into a few, um, so before I go over the concrete constructions and 
their efficiency, I want to talk about a few limitations. So the first limitation is the homomorphism, as I've mentioned already. Um, so honest commitments are just standard commitments. And since we want the, since we demand the standard commitment scheme to be additively homomorphic, um, this also holds for honest commitments. Also, small constants um, work out fine. So we can just multiply small constants and um, and everything is is fine. So homomorphy holds in this case, but as soon as we have this honest commitment where um, where the prover might have gamma not equal to one, then we don't necessarily have homomorphism um, that holds. And this is even worse for non-equal denominator. So um, intuitively, this is because um, if there's two unequal denominators, then we multiply the challenges and at some point they might not be short anymore. So this means that you have to be careful um, about the guarantees of the range proof um, as it was presented. And you also have to ensure that the committed integers are, the committed integers are small enough. So the second limitation is the group size. This is because we need to ensure that there's no overflow in the square decomposition. So um, we th need even a stronger variant of this. We need that um, as we can only check the size of the mask um, or essentially the size of the masked witness. Um, we need that the, uh, the three square decomposition holds for the masked witness over z. And for this, there should not be overflow on either side. Um, and that means that there's quite a large requirement for the group size. But um, this can essentially be optimized. Um, so the if we have shorter masks, then we have, can have a smaller modulus. Um, and this can be um, this can be done via rejection sampling. And also repetitions mean shorter challenges means smaller modulus. And lastly, this is not necessarily um, based on the square decomposition, but in general, we can apply field charmier and we can get non-interactive range proofs. So um, before I finish my talk, I quickly want to talk about the settings. So in the DLOG setting, we um, essentially construct a range proof that improves over bullet proofs on um, in size uh, in lattices we improve on the on the state of the art for um, standard lattices for large batches and in class groups um, we construct the first concretely efficient unbounded integer commitment scheme without trusted setup in in dlog groups we essentially just um, use Patterson commitments um, with a slight tweak. So we use the discrete log short exponent assumption in order to have smaller randomness. And the decomposition can just be shown using uh, the homomorphic properties of the honest commitment scheme. And this yields um, efficient range proofs for single messages or for single values x. And if we compare this to the state of the art, um, so bullet proofs, um, we can see that we have around 80 to 89% of the size of uh, the range proofs. And also, um, interestingly, the prover's work is quite lower um, if we compare the group multiplications. Of course, our groups are larger, so this is not necessarily a um, as large increase in the final computation, but at least um, it hints that the that the prover's work should be quite a lot um, faster. So um, secondly, we instantiated this scheme or this abstract framework in the lattice setting where we use BDL 18 commitments. And um, yeah, I don't want to go into too much details, but essentially we can show the decomposition with a standard polynomial trick. Then we perform the range proof for each component. And then if we um, amortize the range proof over a lot of um, a lot of values, then we essentially get quite efficient um, 
quite efficient range proofs for a lot of integers. And lastly, we apply this framework in the class group setting where we have a group G with hidden order. And essentially we have two main assumptions, the order assumption and the subgroup indistinguishability assumption. Um, so in, in class group, since we have hidden order, we can show that we can extract in a, a rational number that can be written as z divided by a power of two. And essentially the range proof has the same structure as the D log version, um, but we require way larger groups because, um, ran, uh, because class groups in general are fairly large around the size of RSA groups. And um, um, what we gain for this is that we don't have any bounds on the committed values. So we can actually show um, a range proof for any um, any integer that we want. And with that, I'm finished. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.